My name is Omar Sobra and I'm with Trimble Navigation. I'm so excited to be here uh, at Meg's office in Berkeley for the very first time. We got the opportunity to present at Google I.O. Uh, some of the applications, which are concept applications uh, for the Tango device, the Project Tango device. Project Tango was introduced, I believe, earlier this year, probably in March, uh, as a concept device that was able to uh, uh, capture the information in 3D around it so that the device would be self-aware of its environment and you could actually interact with it and the device would be able to see what you see. But in addition of just having standard cameras, these devices include a 3D scanner. The way the device works is you have several components to make this uh, self-awareness of its environment. Uh, it has two cameras. Uh, one is pretty much a standard camera. The other one is a 170 degree spherical camera that is being used for motion tracking. So as you move the device, it's tracking where it is. It also has some IMUs, as it says in there. So combining those information, brings you the location and the motion of the device. The most important interesting things for me, because I have been into 3D scanning since the late 90s, is that it integrates a small sensors that projects an infrared laser and capture the information in 3D. So it creates a point cloud. So when you combine motion tracking, as well as detection of surfaces, you're able to recreate your entire world. So we got invited at Google I.O. with three other companies to present the applications that were developed, uh, that we have developed on there. We did two applications. One for all our SketchUp users around the world, the ability to finally being able to capture very precisely your entire room, your entire apartment, very fast inside a, a, the Tango device and create a SketchUp model. This application is, got, is called SketchUp Scan. It enables you to walk around your room, scan your corners or scan your walls, and then that automatically creates your SketchUp model. You can then edit it and add your furniture, your windows, your doors, everything that is around, but at least you get the exact uh, copy of your apartment into SketchUp as your base. So you can imagine for architects, for people like you and me, like want to change their basement, the furniture, all of these things, that's a really good uh, uh, heads up and start for your project. The second hub that we've done is called Through the Wall. And um, it's a common problem by a lot of people around this uh, world where um, imagine what's behind the walls in this room, right? It's really hard to tell. And sometimes you need to drill stuff, you need to make some maintenance, review some what's behind. And I can just walk in this room and using the building information modeling, the beam information, I would be able to see um, all the cables, the HVAC, all the things that are in this building to actually be able to do some work on it or send a work order to someone to repair something. They would actually be able to come to that precise location and do the repair or the maintenance that, is being, uh, that needs to be done. So my background is in 3D laser scanning. Back in the 90, late 90s, we had designed a system that was about that big, that was able to capture 70 points per second, and we could display that on huge silicon graphics, and it, you could turn about 40,000 points at the same time. That was just amazing. Today's technology enables us to capture information at, about, at the rate of about a million points per second and go at distances that are way beyond everything we imagine. But even at that time in the late 90s, we were dreaming of having a 3D scanner in every home. We knew there was a potential for that. And Microsoft did that with the Microsoft Kinect on the Xbox. This is definitely a 3D scanner. I never dreamed at, dreamt at that time that I would have a 3D scanner in my pocket right here. That is so exciting. It opens tons of new opportunities, possibilities for the professional world, but also for the makers. So these apps are concept apps, and the Project Tango is not available to the public. They just announced that you will be able to uh, submit a request to get one 
as a developer. It's kind of what they did with the Google Glass program, where it's still not available to the public, but it's so much potential to explore, to see what can be done, that uh, I think Google, that's what Google is trying to do. They're opening it to the world, to the developers, to crazy people around the world, and see what's gonna come up with that. So we don't know if or when that's gonna be available, but this, think of it as a great concept car. You go to the show and it's demonstrating some of the amazing possibilities of what can happen. And this is a great baby to start working on it and dream all around the world and program on it. Kids, it's so important that you learn how to program because that gives you access to really fun things like that. And there's many more, not just from Google, but um, that's, that's a key element of our future. I love that. So Google have been the first one to integrate that into a small device, but Apple's, uh, Apple has actually acquired a company called PrimeSense that does 3D scanning devices, small chips. So you can imagine that Apple, Microsoft, who already has te uh, technologies like Kinect, will one day release some uh, self-aware devices, mobile device in the, in the world. So that's, that is just the beginning that is very exciting.